So, uh, good morning. Thanks for coming. Uh, so the work I will present today is entitled Using v V2V Communication to Create Over-the-Horizon Awareness in Multiple-Lane Highway Scenarios. And this work has been done by both DACs and pervasive systems groups at the University of Twente in the Netherlands. So here's the outline of the presentation. First, I will start with a brief introduction and uh, motivation of the problem that we addressed. Then uh, the goal of this work, followed by the de description of our solution, which is the author protocol, by giving first an overview and then describing each of its layers. I will give some of, some of the results from our performance evaluation, and then I will end with conclusion and future work. So there have been several solutions to assist drivers on the road, and these are called the driver support systems or driver assistance systems. One, one example of such system is the congestion assistant that has been designed also uh, in the Netherlands by Van Driel. And the idea is that, that based on observed user needs, the system is able to improve traffic safety and efficiency. It can reduce the emission of CO2 in the environment, and it can reduce costs by wasting less fuel. However, for this system to work, some of the information required is beyond what the internal sensors of the vehicles can provide. So that means that the information should be gathered from the vehicles which are ahead on the road. Navigation systems usually provide only a rough estimation of live traffic conditions, and usually in the order of minutes. In this work, we use V2V communication to achieve an end-to-end -end delay in the order of milliseconds. An example of how V2V communication can be used for that is illustrated, is shown by this figure here. So the idea is that when the vehicles are approached in a congestion area, it can be uh, by using, by means of vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication, they can be warned of this congestion area so they can choose a different route or uh, slow down their speed to make the traffic more efficient. So the goal of this work is how to provide an accurate over-the-horizon awareness with regard to the, this traffic ahead to these driver support systems by means of V2V communication. Acquiring this extended view comprises two main tasks. tasks. The first is the gathering. Whenever the vehicle receives information from multiple vehicles, this information must be gathered, gathered together, and by using aggregation mechanisms, you have to make sense out of this data. Another task is the dissemination part. Because we think the information is important to all the vehicles surrounding the place, we, use, we rely on broadcast communication. However, when using broadcast, we, we, we must rely on suppression techniques to prevent the so-called broadcast storm problem. Most papers focus on only of these aspects. The traffic filter, however, which has been designed by one of our authors in, in the University of Twente, tackles both problems. But in his work, he only considers a single lane straight highway. In this work, the focus is then to extend and adapt his solution to a more general multiple lane scenarios. So this is the overview of our solution, which is called the Over the Horizon Awareness OTA protocol. This protocol is organized in two different layers, the upper traffic filter layer and the lower dissemination layer. The upper traffic filter layer is responsible for managing and organizing the traffic information received in a structure that we call the traffic map. It also filters the traffic information to include only the essential points of the road. And the ultimate goal is to have an accurate traffic view. The dissemination layer, on the other hand, is responsible for managing the exchange of traffic map messages among the vehicles by using vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication. And the ultimate goal is to disseminate as quickly and efficiently as possible. So here, we have an overview of the protocol stack. Uh, we have the auto protocol, which works on top of the standard IEEE 802.11p. And on top of that, we, ha we have, for this is one example, it could be any driver support system that could benef benefit from the information we provide. And also the navigation system that could be used for together uh, position information or some information from mapping, etc. 
So now I will not describe all the details of all the functions of the protocol, so I'll give um, some details of the main function of each layer. And I will start by giving, by describing the upper traffic filter protocol layer. So the general idea of the traffic map is that when a vehicle, uh, when a vehicle on top of the road here, ahead on the road, um, is the first of a cluster, it will start building the traffic map by inserting its own position and speed value. Then, by exchanging information to other vehicles behind, each vehicle will add its own information uh, in such a way that the last vehicle here will have a complete overview of the traffic of all the lanes of the road. However, including this information from every vehicle is not a viable solution. This is because large messages is the main cause for channel congestion. So instead of inserting all the information, we just include the crucial spots, the main points that could represent best the road. And for that, we classify vehicles as either source, which are the vehicles that insert a new information in the traffic map and they have important information, or the relay vehicles, which are the vehicles that simply relay the information to other vehicles behind as, soon as, as, as quickly as possible. So we, we simplify these concepts here in this figure. So we have a road with three lanes and we have different speed profiles for each of these lanes. We have a traffic jam here and here we have a, a free flow traffic. And each blue line represents a vehicle in each speed in the Y axis. So the, the idea is that the traffic map is first built here on the end of, in the end of this road and then it's propagated to other vehicles behind and whenever there is something important to be added, this, this information is added by, uh, represented by these red spots here in such a way that the vehicles in the position zero could have a, uh, an, an idea of the speed profile of each of the lines. And the way we, in, we include this information in the traffic map is both speed-based and distance-based. For the speed base, we define two different edges and whenever the difference between the speed of the last value added in the traffic map and the, the, the speed of the vehicle that is currently processing uh, the, tra the traffic map received, uh, if the difference falls inside one of these edges, which we have the accelerating and braking, then there is something significant to be added. And we can, by using parameters, we can make it more or less sensitive, each of these lobes. For instance, you could say that uh, if there is a vehicle braking ahead, so you can make, uh, you, you, you want to have a more uh, detailed data about this decreasing speed and you could make this slope more sensitive. The, the distance based scheme is simply to remain fresh information so every X kilometers or for instance one kilometer, a new entry will be added. So now we'll give uh, details of the dissemination protocol layer. Because we think the information is important to all the vehicles, we rely on broadcast communication. However, when irresponsibly used, broadcasting may cause high redundancy, contention, and collision, which all together is referred to as a broadcast storm problem. There have been several proposals of suppression techniques to cope with these problems in mobile ad hoc networks, manets. However, just a few of just few proposals have been uh, uh, presented for, specifically for Vanets. Here are some examples for the design specifically for Vanets. So the idea is that when a vehicle first broadcasted uh, a message here, for instance, there was an accident or any kind of event, all the vehicles would rebroadcast simultaneously in a flooding uh, mechanism. To uh, prevent that, we assign different priorities or time slots to make that some of the vehicles will be broadcast before the others, you know, in such a way that the other vehicles can realize that the information has been already uh, disseminated so they can cancel their transmissions and uh, diminish the number, of trans uh, the number of broadcasts. The first example we have here is with priorities. So uh, the most distance vehicles with, would have a higher priority uh, when compared to the others and they will be broadcast before. The same happens here with time slots. So the most distance vehicles will, have, will be assigned to an earlier time slot than the others. 
And the last example is a mixture of both. In our work, because we have different categories of vehicles, namely source and relay vehicles, we think that we should give more priority to the source vehicles. And this is because they have crucial information to be added in the traffic map. So we assign earlier time slots for them. So here we have uh, time slots, the first two time slots for source vehicles, which are represented by this, round, uh, this, this white rectangle and the later time slots are assigned to relay vehicles. And because there is an order that the information is gathered from the traffic, namely, uh, we want to know first what has happened uh, closer in a, in a position closer to the center and then to the, a position uh, farther from the center. Among the, the source, the, the time slots for source vehicles, we assign a different pattern, so the vehicles closer to the center will be broadcast first. On the other hand, the relay vehicles will function as I shown before in the, in the previous slide, and they will simply, uh, the most distance vehicles will be broadcast before, because in this case they don't have anything to add, so we simply want them to be broadcast as soon as possible. And to avoid that, to prevent that, uh, uh, multiple uh, simultaneous broadcasts happen in a single time slot, we include an, a, a small extra delay for each of them. So now we present some of our results from, from, from our performance evaluation. We used Omnet++ 4.0 with the mobility framework and we used an existing 802.11b module altered to behave as 802.11p. And we considered uh, simple static scenarios with different densities and also a more realistic mobility scenario with high speed deviations. So the first uh, result here is the reachability, which is the number of vehicles that received the information from one uh, sent in one end to the other of the road, considering a five kilometer road. So we have here the results for a single lane, a junction, a multiple lane, and roads with opposite direction. And generally, with, with a higher density, we have a better, well, a well connected network, so the reachability is near 100%. With the exception of the multiple lane scenarios that we, uh, we, 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 we had, because of the higher number of vehicles assigned to a single time slot, and, and thus uh, more collisions happen. Here is the result for delay. Generally, the delay is decreased when you have a, a, a better connected network. And what is important here is that for all the scenarios we consider, the delay for a five kilometer road was less than 0 0.6 seconds. For the mobility scenario, we used a trace taken from the Quadstone Pyramix Traffic Simulator 5.2. And we consider here uh, a scenario that combined those static, simple static scenarios. So we have uh, a road, a multiple lane road here in the opposite direction that works as a background noise for the radio. And here we have section one where we induce a traffic, a traffic jam by uh, making the, the vehicle generation rate higher. And here we have a section two and three with moderate traffic. In order to to, to, have a, uh, to analyze this mobility scenario, we define the metric called the distance of awareness. So the distance of awareness is the distance that uh, is the, ma the maximum distance of awareness that a vehicle at the beginning of the road could achieve during the simulation for each time instant. That means that a vehicle at the beginning of the road could be aware of information from, for instance, five kilometers ahead. And we compare this with a maximum theoretical distance, which we simply consider a perfect transmission range without any errors or delay. And we can see that for, for the actual data retrieved from the, our simulations is, is nearly, is, is almost always close to the maximum theoretical distance. Uh, here in the blue line, there was a little shifting of time, but this is because in our maximum theoretical distance, we didn't consider the end-to-end -end delay. With regard to accuracy, we measured the accuracy error in terms of kilometer per hour, 
And for all the static and mobility scenarios, the, the accuracy was less than five kilometers per hour. In higher densities, the error is even lower because of lower speed deviations. For instance, in a traffic jam, the vehicles practically don't move, so we can have a better estimation of the speed profile. And we simply calculated that by connecting the spots that we include in the traffic map and then measuring the difference of the actual speed of the vehicles and the speed that was projected when connecting these points. So to finalize my presentation, we have presented, uh, I have presented the auto protocol. It, it is able to provide an accurate over the horizon awareness with high reachability and end-to-end -end delay. In future work, we plan to use power control mechanisms for, to improve the, uh, the results for dense scenarios. And we, we, we want to improve the reachability by using storage carry forward mo model in the opposite direction. And this has already been published with the SRD protocol. Thank you. And <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. Good talk. Thank you very much. Thank you.